So, Secretary, um, the theme here at CPAC this year is America versus socialism. I'm asking all of our major guests this. Can you make the case for us against socialism? Why would socialism be bad for the country? Well, all you have to do is look at Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, all you have to do is take a look down south and see what's happened. An energy-rich nation, by the way. A very energy-rich nation. Which has just been squandered. Absolutely correct. I mean, a beautiful mm -hmm. country, a rich country. Uh, it's you know steeped in resources, energy resources, and it's gone from that to what it is today, which is basically a, a complete collapse of their economy. Mm -hmm. There are important lessons to learn there for America, and that's the fundamental difference between the Trump administration policy, one that is built upon energy diversity, all of the above, as you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. We're going to produce fossil fuels. We're going to produce renewable energy. Mm -hmm. We're going to produce nuclear energy. That gives us diversity mm -hmm. and energy security as well. It's a fundamentally different approach than what you see in a social nation. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, at the same time though, uh, uh, so what, what, what we have here is a really interesting contrast. So on the Democrat side of the aisle, you have a Bernie Sanders, and I don't want to get too political with you here. Sure, I can't. But I, I know you can. <laughs> but like you've got a Bernie Sanders who's a devout socialist who's emerging right. uh, as the uh, very potentially likely Democrat nominee. We'll see what he does on Super Tuesday. We'll see what he does in South Carolina. But the um, the fact of the matter, he's won the first three states. Uh, then you have President Trump on the other side uh, in the Republican Party, which is really new, renewed, re-energized Republican Party sure. um, under President Trump. Things have changed a lot inside the GOP. Um, the, uh, the, the contrast really couldn't be clearer, I think, for the country uh, with which direction we want to go. And that's one of the cool things about here at the con uh, with the conservative movement in CPAC. Uh, uh, this is my 10th CPAC, by the way, so mm -hmm. 10, wow. a decade straight. Yeah. Um, so the uh, so we've seen uh, the conservative movement's uh, role in shaping this policy stuff that you guys are talking about there at the Energy Department uh, is is incredibly important. Sure, no, it's absolutely important. It goes back mm -hmm. to the mindset. It goes back to the mm -hmm. you know the the very basic philosophy that we're going to choose to you know to utilize and approach these types of policy issues. So we mentioned you know Venezuela and socialism mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. You know they don't think of their people as as uh, very important, if you will, or, or assets. Mm -hmm. It's fundamentally different than here in the United States where the beauty uh, of our approach is that we recognize the human innovation, the, the talents that Americans and humans bring to these energy issues. You know, if you, if you think about it a little bit philosophically, oil is what? Oil is nothing more than a dirty liquid in the ground. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have value as a resource until we apply our human talent to it and our human innovation to it, and we use it as energy. That's what we do in America so very well. And it's what socialist countries don't do at all. Mm -hmm. They treat these things as, you know, uh, resources available to the government, not to the people, and it's just—it's a radically different approach than we have here in America. Mm -hmm. So now, um, the uh, on the energy independence thing, one of the things that's been really interesting watching the Trump administration, whether it be Anwar up in Alaska, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, fracking uh, in the uh, the Rust Belt area, of Pennsylvania, etc., uh, whether it be uh, clean coal uh, and getting coal back on the radar, because I mean there was a there there is a war on coal, and there has been for a long time by the left, uh, whether it be uh, nuclear. I mean, there's all sorts of different energy uh, possibilities, and, and President Trump and you guys have uh, uh, opened up the uh, using all of those. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, tell tell us about some of the things that you guys have done in terms of opening different things up and what's coming down the road. Absolutely. So the president mm -hmm. gave us a directive very early in the administration to mm -hmm. look at the regulatory policies that we have in each one of our agencies. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we've done. We've reviewed all of the regulations within the agencies and we've made selective decisions about what to eliminate. And he was very specific. He said for every new regulation, you have to reduce a number. And what we've done is over the over the last two to three years, for every new regulation that we've imposed, and some are necessary, we've reduced the number of regulations by 22 on the other side of the ledger. That opens up the marketplace, it opens up capital investment, it opens up the entire energy workspace for all Americans. And what we're focused on, and the other directive he gave us, is that we we're gonna focus on all forms of energy. Mm -hmm. So for the president, all of the above literally means all of the above. Mm -hmm. It does mean coal, it does mean natural gas, it does mean crude oil, mm -hmm. it does mean nuclear, and it does mean renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So it's all of the above. That gives us diversity, it gives us options, which you know, if you, if you come from a free market school of thinking, the more options you have as a consumer, the better pricing you're going to get. And that's what we're seeing all across America, cheaper pricing and more availability of energy all across. So yesterday at CPAC, we heard the, from the EPA administrator, and he said that the, the environment has never been cleaner. 
Uh, and this uh, energy obviously ties in with the environment because you have emissions and so on and so forth. That's how the world works. Sure. Uh, the If you listen to the left and the socialists, the Bernie Sanders and the AOCs, they want to do a Green New Deal. They want to shut down all of our energy options except mm -hmm. for uh, their the solar and wind or whatever. Um, but uh, and those are great and all. You know, we should definitely use those too. But the 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 idea that that's where we're gonna fuel the economy is just not. It's just not the, the society yeah. isn't there yet. The technology isn't there yet. So that being said, um, with this uh, energy uh, uh, approach that the Trump administration's taken, we've also had great success for the environment too. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And, and again, it's it, it's it's the approach that we take. Mm -hmm. It's the development of nuclear energy, which is zero carbon. It's carbon free. It's emissions free. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen over the last decade or so is what we've been able to grow the economy by roughly 17 percent, perhaps a little more because I don't have the latest economic statistics. But we've been able to grow the economy here in America, and at the very same time, mm -hmm. we have reduced carbon-related emissions from the energy field by 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So think about that for a second. There is no other country in the world, not any signatory to the Paris Accords, mm -hmm. no other country in the world can make mm -hmm. that claim. We've grown our economy and at the same time reduced carbon-related emissions. It's a fantastic story and I think it serves as a proof point to this approach of developing all forms of energy. But you're not going to hear that from the establishment media. There's no doubt about that. So uh, the other thing that's uh, intricately connected with energy policy is that it has uh, a... Uh, um, uh, 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 a link, very close link with, with the economy. Sure. Uh, so there's a lot of jobs, uh, and this will be my last question for you, Secretary. Sure. Sure. Uh, so there's a lot of jobs that are created uh, uh, because of the energy uh, policies you guys are doing. Can you give us some statistics on that? How, yeah. how has the economy benefited from this energy policy? Absolutely. So, so one of the great challenges that we mm -hmm. have, and it's a, it's a good challenge to have, so I don't want to make this sound like bad news. It's actually mm -hmm. good news. Our production numbers in the United States have gone up dramatically, as we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Our biggest challenge today is actually developing the infrastructure, pipeline capacity to get that product to market. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means jobs for Americans. Everywhere from the Dakotas down to Texas, back you know from the West Coast out in Wyoming all the way to West Virginia. Mm -hmm. It means infrastructure jobs. Importantly, however, it's not just jobs to import oil or import natural gas or import energy to America. Now we have export opportunities. Mm -hmm. So when President Trump, I'll give you one quick stat, when President Trump met with the former president of the EU just two years ago, just two years ago, they struck a deal for Europe to buy more U.S. LNG exports from the United States. They are up 600 percent in two years. That is a phenomenal increase. So we've gone again from that basic point of importing gas, importing energy, to exporting energy, and that means jobs all across America. All right. Well, Secretary Dan Briette, uh from the Energy Department, sir, uh, thanks for joining us here on Breitbart News, uh, Breitbart News Radio. And uh, uh, where can people go to learn more about what you guys do at the Energy Department? You can go to energy.gov or you can follow me on Twitter. All right. Secretary Briette, thank you uh, for joining us. Then. Thank you so uh, much. <laughs>